Oh, welcome back my gardening friends. It's 9.30 on Saturday the uh, 25th and I've managed to get up here uh, half an hour one night and another half hour another night to uh, finish uh, this off. In a previous video we rotivated that area where the fruit trees used to be and that area over there where the uh, new pallet collars uh, are going so that we could uh, get the soil nice and soft so it was e easily wheelbarrowed uh, over here for use uh, uh, later on so I need to get the pallet collars in there so a little bit of pause and record while the kettle's boiling I found that long spirit level stroke scraper dupery thing helped me no end when I did the artificial grass at home and it's so much easier to put that across to make sure that they're reasonably level so they'll be pleasing to the eye so that's those in uh, where are we uh, that pallet collar there is level but that one there right at the back uh, is slightly high you might just be able to see it there so I'm going to drop that one down and then the rest will follow everything all the material in those two sorry Mandamoo <laughs> them two will go into these beds as well as this soil here then I can get the final pallet collar in here once that soil's gone. I didn't want to move it all, uh, but I need to get the clay balls in the uh, these in the bottom of these. But I'm going to line these shortly. Now, normally I line them from the top, but as you've probably seen on a lot of my uh, growing spaces and those at the back, the weight of the soil pushing down ends up pulling the plastic down and it tears the staples so the first piece will go in there and then the saw should slide down to uh, the the the, um, the plastic that's there and not hopefully pull it it won't matter if it breaks the staples off down here because I'll be overlapping the plastic not sure how high they're going to be but eventually they could end up being four high but until we get more pallet collars the best pallet collars are going at the bottom the poorer ones higher up then they're easier to change uh, in the future but lining them does help them uh, to keep dry in a fashion they can breathe that's why I don't paint anything let the wood breathe that's better I've still got six pots to empty there's two pots there with the clay balls in uh, if you've seen my previous videos I found a compost uh, dump fly tip unscrupulously dumped uh, with the clay balls in so uh, I'm uh, getting as many out as I can saving that compost it'll be useful uh, uh, elsewhere so that's what a little job I've got to do but the next job is to line the pallet collars so I'll just go and get my Visqueen builders plastic it's what they use when concreting etc and I find that's the best it does get affected by the sunlight at the top of uh, the beds but it's easily sorted but what's buried will last forever so it's just gone uh, 10 o'clock now so let's get the first uh, bit of uh, bisqueen on so luckily enough this plastic goes around the pallet collars with enough room just to overlap all I do is pop the staples in the top don't try and keep it level because as you go round you could end up twisting it. it just makes it uh, awkward for yourself. Go into the next corner, pull it tight and then squeeze it along as he runs out of staples. You get the idea. Again, tight into the corner that just comes around there now try to push the plastic in so it doesn't uh, have room for the soil to push in as he runs out the staples again he 
if you're struggling to get the palette colors on <laughs> just make sure that isn't bent inwards uh, I've got a pair of uh, old uh, pliers and that's my persuasion tool for anything on the allotment that doesn't go as planned and I've just had issues because some of the palette colours wouldn't fit on that bottom one so I've had to revert to pinching the ones I moved earlier back so just stack them all up make sure they fit before you put the bottom plastic on else it makes you sweat so we're going to do exactly the same again I'm going to go three I found two more palette colours uh, this week so without uh, boring you too much Close as we can to the top, we cut it on backwards. But when you can see that or not, we've got a good um, 100 mil, six inches, 50 mil, whatever. At the bottom, we don't staple anything down the bottom. The soil will hold it tight. And if this does drop down, uh, this will keep it uh, covered. He says. Hopefully, we won't have the issues we've had before. So we'll see if that uh, actually uh, works now. Uh, some people are tempted to do that, but don't forget, moisture rises. Any moisture behind there needs to get out. So, uh, yes, you sometimes end up with soil popping down there, but the, let the wood breathe and the pallet collars will last uh, a very long time especially if you have to buy them these are all for free i fill all these for free you have to when you're gardening on a budget or is it because i'm tight but we still have to pay for the visqueen plastic that isn't uh, cheap but if you're paying 10 pound a pallet collar there's 30 pounds with a pallet collar there and the visqueen's probably 40 odd pound a, a full roll and that lasts, lasts for absolutely ages so let's start filling them. I don't want to drag you here all day. Uh, you can see what I've done at the uh, end of the uh, February uh, tour. But uh, start, for starters, we're going to put uh, some of that topsoil in. Putting a good shovelful in each corner to settle the plastic down. Remember, this soil was from the Wildflower Wildlife Garden. Probably full of seeds, but because it's buried, they won't germinate. That's the point of no dig. If you turn your soil, you expose the seeds. If you don't turn your soil, they can't grow. A bit of soil in. Uh, there's a football match on, so you probably hear a bit of... This is the compost with the clay balls in. I didn't want to put that on the bottom because it could shoot out the sides. The clay balls are there for aeration and uh, help uh, with the uh, moisture retention. have a nice layer of, uh, that could be a stalk off a uh, dandelion, so oh, come on, get a grip. But uh, there'll be, uh, the horses uh, eat the grass and everything else, there'll be absolutely loads of worm eggs uh, within the, uh, within the fresh poo. Uh, we'll be adding some more well-rotted manure, but that's fresh as you get and it's probably still steaming and just before we go too far I'll make sure it hasn't moved when I was putting the plastic in I made that mistake uh, a couple of years ago this is the material from the last year's giant vegetables we'll put uh, a bit, a bit in here this is the same material that I grew my second place giant carrot uh, that uh, I uh, took to Malvern Autumn Show Three buckets of the compost that we find that the cannabis growers unscrupulously dump that's got the perlite in. One bucket of the leaf mould rejects from out of the trommel. Three buckets of the uh, cocoa koi that we find also. Some soil and leaf mould uh, just to help with the moisture retention and to give the compost and everything we add in some body. And last for now, this is some of my homemade compost that we made last year out of the compost bin and all the bits that uh, we get for free. Now, doesn't that look nice? If you was a giant vegetable, you'd love to be in that. Even more when I add the next ingredients. 
but these pallet collars four high can take over a thousand litres of material so all the effort I put in does pay me in the end so this is some well rotted and uh, the worms uh, are doing a grand job uh, these all migrate down to the bottom or to the top and I'll just uh, break this up I'll get it covered up but we mustn't compact it because of those lovely worms doing the work and we keep building the layers with whatever we've got now because I'm struggling to get manure or I'm not struggling to get it it's having time to do it when there's other things that need collecting that take priority uh, this grow organic similar to 6x uh, two or three handfuls for each uh, plant uh, is uh, all you really need so I'm going to have two scoops per bed in the topish layers because we're growing root vegetables opposite to how you should grow them you should grow root vegetables in soil that hasn't had any manure for four years uh, we want the roots to just go mad and feed and grow really ugly so that's what it looks like it smells beautiful and as, as you know if it smells all right it's good but it's also if it smells rank it's good as well so we'll put two of those uh, in each of uh, the beds once we get to this layer and we'll just uh, gently pop that in I should probably only grow two giants in each bed we did four last year and six sometimes uh, with giant vegetables as well the more space we give them the less the competition and the bigger they get, hopefully. It's now 11.30. It's now 12.30, just having a brew and a little bit of fruit, keep me going. Uh, I'm not sure how long the battery will last, so if you just disappear, I'll just say it now, happy gardening to you all. Leave a comment, thumbs up, thumbs down, and uh, of course leave me a comment. Let's see how we go. now just before one o'clock I'm going to empty them far beds and grab a few pallet collars off those is about to go we'll catch up another time happy gardening to you all till next time my friends to for now <laughs>